This year was a great year as a developer and this trend would continue to be in the next year. In this video, let's take a look at top 5 trends I believe are very important for you as a web developer to stay updated with and take a look at as well entering the new year. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. The first trend is Web3. Now this has been super hyped and there is a lot of hype going on honestly. And to be honest, I'm also that one kind of person who doesn't understand everything about what is happening in Web3, the NFT parts and the craze which is going on, the coins and stuff. But I do believe there is a strong application of the decentralization, at least in the fintech side and also in a way when metaverse for example one day becomes reality in the next 10 years 20 years then that concept of nft and owning something on the blockchain this concept would really be powerful so if you want to prepare yourself for the next 10 to 15 years of change in the technology i think it would not be a bad idea to start dipping your toes into web 3 front just now. Web3 can mean a lot of things to a lot of people. Right now, it's not clear whether that's decentralization alone, whether that's Ethereum, whether that's Solidity blockchain stuff, smart contract or anything. And trust me, we are trying to make our best at Codam to make this process simple. This is what the Codam's Web3 learning path helps you achieve as well, where the first interactive course is live. The announcement video was made live a couple of weeks ago, and uh, you can start working with Ethereum and Solidity interactive on Codam. So I believe in 2022, not only the progress in general would be great in Web3 space, but also on the learning resources which you will find on Codam. The second trend which will continue to evolve in next year is the use of Rust and Wasm in the web development world. It has already been you know, a huge advantage and a huge performance boost in frameworks like Next.js, where they are trying to now replace the standard Webpack and TypeScript builds with SWC and stuff which is done in Rust, which provides a better developer experience by speeding up your builds. So I believe this trend would continue to do so over the next few coming years because there is a clear advantage of performance. I mean, as a developer, you would obviously feel when your build time drops from three minutes to 30 seconds, right? You feel that performance boost. So companies like Vercel, which are very well funded and very well aligned on the mission to make web faster, would keep pushing these sort of technologies because of the primary reason that they are much, much faster than JavaScript in a lot of CPU bound tasks they do. But in general, I do believe like the adoption of Wasm would also enable a lot of interesting applications like Photoshop is already doing it, bringing Photoshop on the web. We're going to see a lot more applications, a lot more native applications coming on the web thanks to Wasm and the support for a lot of interesting features. So this is also something you should keep an eye out in the next year. My third thing which would be a lot trendy in the next year, I believe is going to be React. And hear me out when I say this, React is doing some major changes in the React Conf they announced, which just happened a couple of days ago, they announced that they are coming up with a compiler for React. Now, a few days ago, I reviewed Swelt versus React and when I said how Swelt does a lot of magic using compilers, people got a little bit mad in the comment section, but that's fine. But this is something which React is also trying to do now by, you know, by having a compiler, React can optimize its code further by introducing a lot of memoization at places where the developer does not explicitly needs to write it. So compiler would kind of shift React towards that magic area where you get less of a syntax and more of performance. So that is also happening. Then of course, React 18 is coming with a lot of new features like React server components and, you know, streaming support and integrating all of this with Next.js and of course, concurrent mode in React 18, which again, boosts performance a lot in the newer versions. It's gonna be a great year for React and the utilities which are being built around it, especially interested in seeing how the compiler plays out, how this stuff plays out. But yep, this is another year because React is already kind of like one of the top most used framework by companies and startups. This would obviously be a big change in the ecosystem if React does something which Svelte is already doing. So that's interesting to see. The fourth trend as usual will remain artificial intelligence but the difference here this time is that github microsoft open ai all of these stuff is coming together to build ai experiences for developers this year we saw how 
you know github copilot turned out to be a great help when you're writing code when you're trying to do smart auto completions and this is gonna just keep on evolving the ai is gonna get better the suggestions are gonna get more personalized and smarter and you know in general having a lot more apis available for you as a developer which are artificially intelligent and available at an ease of implementation where you don't necessarily have to understand the AI or the logic behind it. That's going to be a trend which is going to get even stronger next year. So of course, artificial intelligence has its own use cases and great use cases wherever you can use it. In some places, uh, you don't even need to understand how the logic and the AI part is working. So as web developers, if we can have those interfaces by these big companies, GitHub, Microsoft, that would really help us build richer interfaces and richer experiences. And OpenAI, GitHub Copilot, GitHub Codex is doing that a lot till a certain extent, which is going to get even stronger this year. The fifth prediction or the fifth, I think the trend which will continue is something like backend, but the way Vercel does it for frontend. So this could be Vercel just as a company because Vercel has been on a acquisition streak. Vercel has acquired Turbo as the repo. Vercel has raised a huge amount of round. Vercel is acquiring a lot of new people, Swelt developer, a lot of great people. I am forgetting a few, but Vercel has been doing a lot of damage the good damage in the web development world. So I'm a big believer in Vercel's ideology of simplifying the UI, the front end. I'm not a big believer in Vercel's pricing, but they do some great work when with Next.js and their platform. But there is no such alternative like Vercel right now, at least none which I know or is very popular, which also does simplification of backend and databases right now. There are a few solutions like Planet Scale and Cloudflare at certain degree, but there is no full-blown solution which allows you to, you know, just deploy your backend anywhere, have preview URLs and everything. So pretty much every single thing, every all the infrastructure for GraphQL as well on CodeDAM, the way we have done it, it's done on completely uh, customized AWS infrastructure and AWS pipeline and we use GitHub Actions to you know generate all the preview URLs and comment it with bots and stuff. So although it's fine as a startup as a company but as an individual you would really appreciate like if you have used Versal right. Similarly if you could have something which does the same job for backend plus databases so you truly have to just focus on your code and you know your execution not on your data and the deployment part that is something I believe either some company who's already doing it Vercel would acquire or maybe Vercel comes up with it or maybe some company you know becomes hugely popular next year so these four five things are the trends i believe would continue to be stronger in the next year they are already strong even till now but this is something where the world is heading into and this is something you should start working towards as well if you want to stay relevant in the next year so that is all for this one let me know in the comment section what you think would be a good trend for developers in the next year. I'm gonna see you in the next video, not in the next year yet, because it's still like a few days away, but yeah, it's close. So happy new year in advance, and I'm gonna see you in the next video really soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of CodeDamp's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and thank you so much for watching.